It's mandatory mini camp time once again here in Carolina. And I have a couple of lingering questions and things that I'd like to see this week as the Panthers take the field one more time before summer break. I'll tell you what those are right here on Locked On Panthers. You are Locked On Panthers, your daily Carolina Panthers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome into another edition of the Locked On Panthers podcast, a part of the Locked On Podcast Network. I'm your host, as always, Julian Council, talking Carolina Panthers with you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday as we are currently in off-season mode. But don't worry, your team every day is still our motto, and I'll be back to five days a week once we get closer to training camp. Subscribe or follow the show for free on YouTube or wherever you listen to your favorite podcast. And be sure to follow me, Julian Council, on Twitter, at Julian Council. Council, where on Friday for one final time until we do get to training camp, I'm going to be answering your weekly Friday mailbag questions. I'm going to be taking a little bit of a hiatus as summer months are here. We're going to have a couple of trips I'm going on, but also going to start doing our position breakdown. So on Fridays, you'll just have a breakdown of a position here in Carolina instead of the mailbag. But one final mailbag before I think July 19th will be the next one. So get it in. For this week's edition of the Weekly Friday Mailbag by either adding me or DMing me. And of course, follow me first on Twitter at Julian Council. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets of any winning $5 bet. That's $200 in bonus bets of any winning $5 bet. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started today. All right, Panthers. Going to have three days of mandatory minicamp starting on Tuesday and ending on Thursday. We have seen in the past with Frank Reich with Matt Rule that the minicamp has only really been a two-day affair. And of those two days, the first day is where you see all of the vets out there. Then the vets typically got a day off on day two, and then they decided Go enjoy the rest of your summer, your time off for the next six weeks, and we'll see you back down there in Spartanburg. Well, they won't be in Spartanburg this year. They'll be in Charlotte there on Cedar Street. And I'm wondering if Dave Canales, in his first year, implementing a new scheme offensively, having the same returning defensive staff, if he's going to have them out there for three days. That's one question I have, but I have three other questions that I think are a little bit more important of about whether they're going to be out there for three days or two days, really one day. Let me get into those here on the show right now. Three lingering questions for me heading into mandatory minicamp. Question number one, what will the edge rushers look like? Now, I understand they don't have pads on, and they're all entering into a new defense. The guys who are coming in here, like DJ Wunham and Jadeveon Clowney and Caleb on Chase on, those are the new faces. The problem is we really haven't seen those faces out on the field for OTAs, and I'm someone who doesn't take too much away from that voluntary process that goes on the past three weeks during the offseason understand it is voluntary the players do not have to be out there you would love to see someone like Clowney to be a leader and to be out there not saying he's not a leader but to be you think he's gonna be one of the leaders on the team especially defensively this year you'd love to see him out there as this team puts together a new culture and tries to move on from a disastrous 2-15 and season but again he doesn't have to be out there it's voluntary and totally understand why he wouldn't want to go and I get it. We know what kind of player Debian Clowney is. The thing is, you would just like to see what kind of player he is with DJ Johnson on the other side. And Caleb on Chase on, who also has not been available out there on the other side. And whenever DJ Wonham is available to be on the field to play, you want to see what it looks like. Now, are you going to gain too much in the middle of June for, during minicamp? Probably not. But still, I would just like to get a little taste of what this defensive uh, line is going to look like more so the edge rushers with Clowney and chase on being out there and i don't expect that either one of them would skip many camp that would be surprising clown has got a contract i'm pretty sure he's happy with it. so it's not a hassan reddick situation where the jets traded for him he hasn't gotten a deal and he doesn't want to show up to any of that we saw what happened with the 49ers where uh brandon Ayuk decided not to show up a lot of guys at this point in time in the season are upset because they don't have their contracts in order and one guy i'm wondering if he is in the same boat maybe not a future 25 million dollar per year type of player but still a valuable player for the panthers and and really for any team, knowing how important field goal kicking is, and Eddie Pinheiro, my question is, will he show up to Carolina for mandatory minicamp? We have not seen Eddie Pinheiro throughout the offseason program, which is rare. I don't know another situation where a kicker wasn't 
out there for the offseason program, even if it is voluntary. But the one key concern that has been brought up is that Eddie Pinheiro only has $150,000 guaranteed. The Panthers wanted to move on from him. They could almost save $2 million in cap space, which could allow them to potentially go out there and add a veteran player who could help them at another position. They would also need to get another kicker. Now they have Harrison Nevis, the thicker kicker out of Missouri, who has impressed every time the media has been out there for the voluntary OTAs. And we'll see what he looks like this week if he is competing with Eddie Pinheiro. And my thought is it's likely going to be a competition once training camp begins. Mevis wasn't a- that accurate in college, but does have a big leg, something that Pinheiro really doesn't have and has limited the Panthers in certain situations when it comes to those 50-plus yard field goals. But he has been fairly consistent, didn't have his best season last year, but still a solid kicker, has proven himself in the league, something that Mevis, who is a rookie, has not done just yet. But the Panthers are also in a situation where they're not necessarily going to be seen as a contender. So they could roll the dice with a younger player who has the bumps and bruises going into the NFL. And potentially he struggles a little bit, but still has a big leg, bigger upside potentially with that. They could do that. I'm just curious if Eddie Pinheiro is going to show up. He is not one of the highest paid kickers in the league. Maybe he wants to get paid more after what he's been able to do to at least stabilize position here in Carolina over the last couple of seasons. We think back to Joey Sly, his inconsistencies, and trying to find another kicker. Zane Gonzalez coming in, and he played well, but then had the injuries, which led Pinheiro to get the opportunity with his relationship with former special teams coordinator and interim head coach Chris Tabor. I'm just curious if he's going to show up. Now, the fine schedule, by the way, for players missing mandatory minicamp. Uh, first day, it's $16,953. Second day racks up. It's not, It goes even higher to $33,108. Third day, $50,855 in total. $101,716 if a player misses all three days of mandatory minicamp. Those are the fines that the team will decide to levy in that situation. Will Pinero be in that boat? Will he show up? And will we get some answers to one of the Otter occurrences this offseason. Where's the damn kicker at? Uh, the third question I have is will the Panthers come out of mandatory minicamp wanting to look at other cornerback options? We have had discussions here on the show about Stefan Gilmore, and everything I have read and I have been told is that there is no momentum there for him to be a Carolina Panther right now. Now, in six weeks' time, once Panthers roll back here into Charlotte for training camp. Possibly could he be signed then? Maybe we will see. He's coming off an also offseason injury. You would imagine he've had he's had surgery and that he probably would not have been available for the offseason program anyways. But if he's available once training camp rolls around, that is a positive, of course, for a Panthers team that I think should be in the market for another capable corner on the outside. Yet JC, who we know is capable. The problem is He's incapable of staying healthy. Dane Jackson comes over with an opportunity to be the starter, and he's going to start as of right now, but probably best suited to be that third corner. Maybe he can step up and be that number two. I don't know, but they definitely need some more depth there and some more length, especially Deshaun Jameson, DiCaprio Boodle. You saw what those guys were able to do last year when they had to step in for JC and CJ Henderson, and Dante was healthy all last season, and they played well, but they're smaller corners. The Panthers need some more guys of length, like you see with JC Horn, if they can find some like that in free agency, like Stephon Gilmore, or maybe another veteran who could be low cost. I don't know how low cost Gilmore would be, even at the age of 34. I'm just curious. They come out of this week and they tell they tell themselves we need to be more aggressive over the next couple of weeks to find someone to come in here to help out this team. And if not, then then I'd imagine at the end of August, once roster cutdowns happen and the Panthers are right there on top of the waiver wire. So those are three lingering questions I have heading into mandatory minicamp. There are three things that I'd like to see coming out of mandatory minicamp after these next three days. I'll tell you what those are here in just a moment on Locked on Panthers. Summertime means baseball, the NBA Finals, and more, and you can bet it all on FanDuel. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $200 you can bet 
on everything from the MVP of the finals, who's going to hit one out of the park and looking at the odds over on FanDuel right now. The Boston Celtics up 2-0 in the series against Dallas, headed to the Metroplex. Boston is plus one and a half to win that game coming up later on this week. And Boston to win the series is at minus 950. The Mavs at plus six. 40. Go and take him if you want to. Looking at finals MVP, Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown at plus 140 to plus 155. And Luka Doncic at plus 650. Pretty good value there. The Mavs are able to turn things around. Luka coming off of that 30-point triple-double in Sunday night's loss. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and add a big win to your summer bucket list. FanDuel, America's number one sports book. I have three lingering questions heading into mandatory minicamp for the Panthers this week, but I also have three things that I'd like to see coming out of minicamp for the Panthers this week. Once we get to Thursday afternoon, the guys get six weeks off, get to relax, enjoy time with their family, and prepare for a season where Dave Canales said on the blueprint, we have a possibility that things can turn around this season. You can't. You can't throw out the possibility that this team goes to the playoffs, according to him. But I don't know necessarily if that is something that we should expect, but still, it's a possibility. Now, for that to be a possibility, the Panthers are going to need to get better play out of their quarterback, Bryce Young. And the main reason Dave Canales is here in Carolina is because of the work that he did with Baker Mayfield and Geno Smith over the last two seasons, helping those guys get to a position where Baker got paid and now he's a quarterback in Tampa for – at least the next couple seasons, maybe the foreseeable future. We'll see how that works out. Geno Smith will have to compete with Sam Howell in Seattle, but still he got paid based off of what he was able to do working with Dave Canales. And now he's been able to turn around his career out there in the Pacific Northwest. The hope is after one disastrous rookie year for Bryce, where it wasn't like, at least in my opinion, he wasn't necessarily just irredeemable where there's no way in the world he's ever going to be the right guy. It, you just didn't see enough of the signs. We have the Packers game. We have the final drives against Atlanta in the rain and against Houston. But outside of that, not a lot of moments. I guess the beginning of the Dolphins game, the end of the Lions game, where there was a little bit of carryover, but still, you're out of that game in Detroit. You start out that game hot against Miami, and then there's nothing else that happens from there. Consistency. Never happened with Bryce. We did not see him build off the performance against Green Bay, then go to Jacksonville, play well. Instead, the Panthers, they got shut out. Goose egg and David Tepper's throwing drinks on fans down there in Duval. So the hope for me is coming out of minicamp is that there is full confidence in Bryce Young from everyone in that building, but really eh, from Dave Canales and the offensive staff and the players that they see a new Bryce. And Andy Dalton talked about last week, the biggest jump you see from these guys from year one to year two. And I'm expecting there to be a big jump for Bryce, mainly because he's got a year of experience. He's been through what I think is going to be the lowest of lows he's going to have as an NFL player. I certainly hope, as long as the Carolina Panther, that's as low as it's going to get for him individually and team-wise, where the Panthers went to in 15 and he did not live up to that number one billing as of yet. So... My hope is that there's full confidence in him and that he really starts showing that this is a guy who can be more of what we saw against the Packers, granted bad defense, more of that than what we saw throughout the course of last season. So confidence in Bryce Young, confidence in himself, that's something I want to see coming out of minicamp as the Panthers head into their little break. Uh, number two, I want to see, and this kind of goes with Bryce, like the offensive line, that's a big reason why I think that Bryce Young will be better. They're going to protect him. I also think they're going to be able to run the football, whether it's Chuba Hubbard or Jatavion, not Jatavion Sanders, but Jonathan Brooks, and maybe even Miles Sanders, who's still here in Carolina. I want to see them be able to take pressure off the quarterback, but I also want to see the guys on the outside come together and show that they actually can be more than – replacement level players was what the Panthers had last year with DJ Chark and with Lishka Chenault and even with Jonathan Mingo, who they drafted. I want to see Deontay Johnson out there cooking dudes, especially with a secondary that pretty damn questionable outside of JC Horn, mainly in the cornerback room. I want to see Adam Thielen still doing his thing. I want to see Xavier Leggett 
look like a number one pick and someone who's going to be an instant impact player in this offense to Tavion Sanders as well at the tight end position. And hell, give me some more Tommy Trimble, Indian Thomas. Now, what does it matter? Probably not that much, but confidence feeling like this offense is headed in the right direction, that they've gone through everything they want to do of installs before to now to the final exam that is mandatory minicamp in Dave Canales' eyes. I want to see it all come together. I want to see the confidence in their quarterback. I want to see the quarterback, the confidence, and all the guys around him and that they are headed into a direction where it's not a complete abomination every single Sunday watching the Panthers try to move the football down the field. My hope is that the offensive weapons start to come together, that there's confidence in their quarterback, and there's a lot of feel good heading in to the rest of the offseason. And a third one. Continuity with the rebuilt defense, as I mentioned earlier, to Davion Clowney, uh, Caleb Von Chase on. They've been guys that have missed out on the uh, the offseason program as far as the OTAs go, which is, of course, voluntary. Josie Jewell missed out on some time there. But having those guys in the fold this week, which I imagine they will be, don't think they want to take a $101,000 fine, even a $16,000 fine if they miss uh, one day. But still, would like to have them around just to be in this system where there are guys like Derek Brown and like J.C. Horn. And I know Shaq Thompson didn't really play last year because of the injury. There were a, there was a couple guys that were here last year that played in the system, but there's still a ton of new faces who really need to get up to speed with the, what they're trying to do. And there was a benefit to having a Jero Vero and his entire defensive staff being back in Carolina because a lot of the returners don't have to learn, learn a new system. When you think about Ashawn Robinson coming in to be a starter, uh, you think about Jadavion Clowney. You do want them. Got Caleb on chase on a part of that edge rotation. They're bringing in Dane Jackson as well. And then two new safeties, a new linebacker. That's a lot of new. And your main guy, as far as the big time defensive signing this off season, hasn't been out there. I'm not blaming him. I'm not sitting here saying that's a bad thing. Uh, it's, you know, probably not the most ideal thing for the Panthers, albeit it is uh, voluntary, but now you get to see what Clowney, and the rest of that defense look like together and get three days of where communication's on the same page, they're understanding what they're asked to be to do, and then they all know going into this break what they need to be in shape for and what they need to be uh, out here doing once we get to uh, training camp. So those are the three things that I want to see from the Panthers uh, this week during minicamp. Really, this whole offseason has been about Bryce Young, and we're going to have a State of the Franchise episode next Monday as I look at the offseason and heading into – uh, the little hiatus before they get to training camp. Uh, also, I mean, the offensive weapons coming together, that's a big part of it. And then kind of do it with the rebuilt def defense. I, I have my concerns about this defensive unit coming into the season. And I think the offense will look a lot better. And that will be far more palatable than what we saw last season. I just, I'm concerned. But I want to see this defense together at least for a week and uh, start building towards, uh, I don't know, just being a solid unit. I, I don't know what my expectation, I do know for the most part what my expectations are i don't know what their ceiling is though i think that's kind of a better way to try and put this here uh with this conversation that we're having now, the panthers of course have been interested in offensive weapons all off season apparently they're gonna bring in another player for a workout this week we'll talk about who that is and where he may enter into the fold here in just a moment on locked on panthers You can never have too many offensive weapons, and that appears to be the Panthers' strategy looking at this past offseason, bringing in Deontay Johnson with that trade, Dante Jackson to the Pittsburgh Steelers in exchange for a sixth and seventh round pick. Uh, he's now here as the X, as the number one guy in Carolina. The Panthers drafted Xavier Leggett in the first round of the NFL draft. We also went out there, got Jadavion Sanders, Jonathan Brooks in the draft, and brought in, I'm going to look at him as weapons, uh, they brought in two new guys on the offensive line to start out at guard, and they can absolutely be weapons in the run game for Carolina. So that has been a big mission for this team as they try to erase the pass of last season and move forward with Bryce Young as their quarterback and get the most that they possibly can out of the major investment they made in him as a number one pick last year. The Panthers have not stopped, apparently, according to Ian Rapport of the NFL Network. The Panthers are expected to work out UFL Offensive Player of the Year, Hakeem Butler, before summer break. Uh, that's what his sources say. The all-XFL pick had 45 catches 
for a league best 652 receiving yards and five touchdowns for the St. Louis Battle Hawks this season. A potential intriguing addition. I think he meant to say all UFL, not all XFL. Uh, but either way, that is um, somebody who's interesting. Hakeem Butler is a player from Iowa State. Put on some teams there with uh, your boy out there in San Francisco, whose name is uh, eluding me right now. Brock Purdy, big body receiver too and the Panthers could use more of those guys don't really have kind of that big body like stereotypical alpha type of receiver that we've seen in the past it would be nice to get another guy like that and you have guys like Terrace Marshall who you hoped would have been that and there's hope that Xavier Leggett can be that there's also hope that um maybe Mingo can turn into that later on down the road but you're still not sure and the Panthers have brought in some guys like Jalen Coker uh, and the other player from Coastal Carolina as UDFAs who have a chance to make this roster and looking at the wide receiver room outside of Deontay Johnson and Jonathan Mingo, uh, Leggett, and Thielen. I don't know who else is going to be on the roster. Uh, I can't say. I guess Amir smith Marset as a returner. Uh, but after that, uh, is David Moore making the team? Is Terrace Marshall Jr. going to make the team? Or either one of the guys we've talked most about uh, as far as UDFA wide receivers going to make it? Or is there an opportunity for a, game, a guy like Hakeem Butler? Or are they going to wait until after Ross got down and add some other veterans to that wide receiver group? It's still a work in progress. You know who the top three should be, really top four, adding in Mingo there after that. It's kind of up to your own interpretation, or it's think something we're going to have to see uh, play out once training camp gets going later on next month. But interesting that Hakeem Butler is going to get a workout here. And I would, hell, if he was the best player down in the UFL, and this, that's the part of the UFL that is important. And I, for football purposes, the NFL doesn't have a developmental league. And if they, if the UFL can be that, which I think obviously is the purpose of it, and you can have a player go have a good season in the spring, then come, because that's honestly for him. Now, the wear and tear of his body is not great, but he's probably more meaningful for him to go out there and actually play and be able to have that tape of him playing against other professionals, maybe not at the highest level, but still get that tape out there. Probably more beneficial for the players like Hakeem Butler than if he would have just been out there uh, during the offseason program. Now, yes, the team gets a first-hand look at him all week long, all day long, all that. But instead, you're like you're actually seeing what he's able to do and how he's been able to develop, and I'm interested to see how this works out. I, I wouldn't mind going ahead and signing him. Why not? Give him an opportunity. Uh, I don't think that there's any surefire guys outside, like, the top four, and I guess you can throw Smith-Marset in there, but really just as a returner, I think it is much receiving talent and potential as possible and then see where that can go. So it's definitely an intriguing uh, potential addition for the Panthers, as Ian Rapport stated there in that tweet. But that's going to wrap up. This edition of the Lockdown Panthers podcast, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, hosted by yours truly, Julian Council. Again, y'all, subscribe or follow the show for free on YouTube or wherever you listen to your favorite podcast. And be sure to follow me on Twitter at Julian Council, where one final time uh, until training camp begins, I'll be back on Friday answering your weekly Friday mailbag questions. So please get those into me as soon as you can. So either at me or DM me at Julian Council to get those questions into me over on Twitter. But in the meantime, be safe. Be happy, be whole as always, keep pounding, and I'll talk to you all on Wednesday.